Well, thanks very much, everybody, for jo thanks very much, everybody, for joining us. Um, it's nice to see a few um, familiar names there on the on the list. Um, I hope that everybody can hear me. I assume, if anybody can't, that uh, Martin will sort you out. Okay. Um, so thanks very much, anyway, for coming along um, to hear about and see a demonstration of our widget design and authoring toolkit. Now, the, the Martin mentioned that the session is titled Creating Simple Apps. And from your point of view, um, or most people's point of view, an app is a widget, is a gadget. The names are, are interchangeable. Um, there are some differences. Um, uh, and the reason that we call them widgets, I'll, I'll explain um, in a moment. So, um, I'll just give you some context for today's session and tell you a little bit about, about what widget is about. Um, and the way we we kind of think of it is uh, that it's the world's first code-free widget design and authoring toolkit for, for education. Now, that's a, a bit of a mouthful and a bit of a grand um, claim. So I thought that I would just break that down a little bit and explain to you exactly what we mean by that. Um, so to begin with, um, code-free uh, means that it requires no programming or coding skills by the user. Um, and in terms of the user, we mean um, any teacher, tutor, or um, education developer who might be involved in the teaching or support of students with disabilities. Um, it's also free insofar as it is open source and free. So that means that everything, uh, every part of the widget toolkit, um, from the components in it through to the code, are all open source or free. So that means that anybody can um, can take it, use it, download it onto their own servers if they want to, um, add components, or even further develop it themselves. Um, as far as saying it's the first world's first authoring tool, um, widget authoring tool for education, it's aimed specifically at creating widgets to support learning. Now, when we first um, started with on, on our journey to develop this um, toolkit, there was actually, this is, I'm going back about two and a half years, and at that point, um, the, in the existing app stores, like the Apple app stores and Google and those kinds of things, they didn't even have a category for education. Although there were educational apps, um, it was quite difficult to find them. Um, nowadays, of course, um, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of apps uh, and more being developed, hundreds being developed every single day and released. But this toolkit is aimed specifically at creating widgets to support learning. Um, and thirdly, the focus is on supporting disabled students. Um, our research group, the Accessibility Research Centre at Teesside, uh, focuses on um, finding digital media solutions to support disabled students. However, um, we have found that through our user trials that it does have applicability in, in mainstream education as well. And hopefully we'll show you a widget that gives an example of that. So although it's, um, uh, it was designed originally for disabled students, or specifically for them, um, it can be used as a mainstream tool too. Um, so going to the the, um, the rationale, well, as I said, widgets, apps, or gadgets are now integral to daily life, but, the, but there are a limited number of those that are specific to the um, educational domain and that are free. Um, 
previous experience from uh, this goes back to a project we had called WIDE, which was Widgets for Inclusive Distributed Environments. This was the first project that was funded by JISC. Um, and in that project, we actually worked with a community of practice, teachers, developers, and I believe that some of the um, uh, some of the participants today might have been involved in in that that early project, um, where we worked with people um, who were involved with disabled students and got them to talk to their students or assess their own students' needs, working from their experience to um, to. Sorry, I'm distracting myself by having a look by looking at the chat thing. Um, uh, we so we worked with these people to uh, design um, widgets that would meet the needs of their own individual students, and then um, the Accessibility Research Centre ourselves developed these widgets for the individuals. Um, this proved very successful, and um, people showed a lot of interest in in having these bespoke widgets. But of course, the model itself was very resource intensive for our developers, which were basically Frank, who's um, going to be demonstrating widget today, and is basically our widget god. Um, he's he's the main developer on the um, project and um, our other colleague, Steve Green. So they were the main developers, and of course they have other work to do. So we found that developing these widgets for people was not sustainable in the long run. So we wanted to find a way of helping people to make these widgets for themselves. And as I said previously, there are no other um, widget authoring tools around um, for non-developers. So we wanted something that would be equally effective for mainstream HE and SE, could potentially be used by both staff and students, and we have used it ourselves um, with our own um, computing students, final year students, who helped us in the past year with um, uh, developing use cases uh, and evaluating the toolkit. And also we wanted something that would support sharing, reuse, and adaptation. I noticed there are a few questions there about can it be used on mobiles, tablets, etc. Because the reason that we call them um, widgets, as opposed to apps or gadgets, is because widgets are W3C standard. So they, they conform to the W3C widget standard. Um, and they are device agnostic. So potentially, um, I say potentially because if you know if you claim that they can be used on any device, you know you'll always find problems. Um, but they can they can be used on any device with a browser. So they are browser based, and that's the main difference between apps like uh, Windows based apps um, or some other gadgets. So basically what we want to do today, um, rather than just talk about what widgets are about, it's much easier to just show you widgets. So we want to introduce you to the toolkit um, in the hope that you'll come along to one of the workshops uh, next week in Leicester or Nottingham and actually try it out for yourselves. Um, and in a moment I'm going to hand over to Frank, um, who is going to demonstrate um, the basic features of widgets, uh, and, and take you through quickly through um, the basics of creating a widget, and then um, we're going to show you some examples of widgets created by teachers and tutors from um, Effie or my little cat, as you can hear, and she's going to help us. Um, that she's going, we're going to, she's not going to show you, we are going to show you some examples of widgets that we created. Um, now, uh, one of the principles, I'll just tell you this before we actually, um, before Frank starts the demo, 
Um, one of the principles that came out of our early um, studies with our community of practice was that it was important to um, have a, a pedagogical foundation for um, the widgets that were created so, so that later on, um, if you wanted to reuse them yourself or share them with somebody else, you would have a use case to base them on. So we started with, um, with learning designs, whereby we um, created a, um, a use case and a scenario and a learning design for the widget. Now, um, when we go through the widget creation process online, we like to start with a sort of paper-based exercise. Although you don't have to, we encourage um, uh, users to start with a learning design, um, and um, but we've also partially incorporated that um, the use case into the the widget toolkit. Um, so at this point, I'll hand over to Frank, and um, I'll switch my microphone off for a little, and I'll ask Frank to um, to take over, and he'll show you the toolkit. Okay. Yes, uh, thanks, Alan. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I'll start sharing my screen to display the tool. Hoping everybody gets the. Uh... So now you should be able to see my uh, my screen with the tool loaded in it. So this is the first view of the tool. Uh, when you start, uh, you've got this welcoming message. So. We start uh, using the, the wizard, which uh, invites the user to fill in all the, the important info. Although you're not, uh, it's not mandatory, you can just uh, select the template and uh, directly start editing your, your widget. Uh, in our case, we'll just add a title. Uh, you can fill in your, uh, the description, your details. Uh, you can also input the uh, the use case. So we invite people to think about what uh, they are designing and uh, who they are designing it for before starting actually editing the widget. We'll leave it blank for now, but you've got some sample personas to draw from. Uh, always. The keywords are usually drawn from uh, the widget components you use. So let's go ahead and finish. So now you start you start editing a widget. So this is the main uh, tool window, uh, where on your left you have all the le the available components you can use within your widgets, categorized. Uh, so there is plenty of components, uh, media, some layouts, input components as well. The main window here is your uh, widget, is your main uh, editing uh, stage, basically. Uh, on the right hand side, you've got the editing panels for the components you have on your widget. So, for example, if we drop a clock here, our visual come down on our small right here. So we have a component dropped into our main stage. We can select it, and on the right hand side, you'll have all the options available to edit the components. So there is the style panel, including many different uh, style options. We've got also themes coming from the components. Uh, this is all the available uh, options you can change for the components. In our case, we'll change the size of the clock. Uh, there is plenty of, comp of, uh, of options. You can also uh, upload medias, uh, such as uh, images, sound, and uh, eventually video, which is not available just now, but will be. We have upload our image right here, which we can add if we want using a media component image, which we can try just to show. Um, the URL would be our image. We've got our image right here. Uh, just for now, we'll delete this one, which we don't need, using the delete component. And we'll keep our clock, just for the demo. 
So that's for the right hand side. On the top, you can see this uh, task panel, which is uh, meant to help you, guide you on your, uh, when you design your widgets. As you can see, we've got uh, one high priority item, which is the clock need a starting time. Basically, what it tells you it's what needs to be done to make the the widget work. Right now, it doesn't it won't work. So we need to set a starting time for our uh, our clock, which you can see right here, starting time. So here you can either set it's in minutes. You can either set a, a static value like five minutes, or you can also link uh, between components. So in our case, we'll use. Uh, we'll use a slider input to select a value which will link to the starting time of the clock. So we'll go ahead and drop in our text, our, our slider. We could have used the text box or a check box if you wanted to. Now, uh, how to link components? Very simple. You, s you click on the clock, so you select the clock. Where there is starting time, you've got a drop down menu where you can select the value from the slider. And this links the slider to the clock. Now, the final step to make this work, we need to we need a button to start the clock, to actually start the clock. So we'll go ahead and drop the button in. So our button will have an action. We'll, the action in our case will be start countdown. Select it. OK, let's make it a bit prettier. We'll center this. The button seems center, but yeah, all right. So now you can see in our task panel, everything is fine. There's no red anymore. So we can go ahead and uh, try a preview. So let's say preview. We'll have our slider at six minutes. So you can actually see what six minutes. And the countdown is uh, is disappearing, kind of disappearing. So it's a very visual kind of thing. You can make it uh, completely opaque, so you you actually don't see the clock. It completely disappeared. All of those are options you get from the clock. Uh, all of those options are explained in the help. And uh, well, the help sends you to the user guides, and we've got a component reference list which uh, gives you more details on uh, on the components, what they do, if they're compatible with every browser or some or not using uh, HTML or CSS3. Uh, it explains in details what uh, kind of uh, attributes, what they do with what kind of value. Uh, for example, our mass capacity is a value between 0 and 1. So if we get back to the authoring toolkit, our mass capacity, let's make it 1. So the clock completely disappears. We also have a preview for mobile, which gives you an idea of how you would see uh, the widget on your mobile phone. So let's have a try again, five minutes. Uh, now you can see the clock completely disappear. This is the kind of uh, options you can get from components. So because there is so many components, there is plenty of options. That's why the help is here, and you can always try out some some values and see what works, what doesn't. Um, so that's it for our design. Let's have a look at our, uh, our toolbar over here. We've got uh, feedback and support, which uh, we invite users to use. Uh, this is coming uh, directly to the developers, so Steve and me. So we can directly uh, address bugs and, uh, and send uh, if there is new feature request or anything. Uh, so the help section, which I just uh, demoed, which is here, with, where you can get the component reference lists. Uh, we also have a, in the media, we have a symbol components, which is using the Mulberry symbol set. Uh, we chose this one because it was open source. And you also get a, a symbol browser, which you can use. Uh, by start typing just a few letters, and you'll have the available uh, the available symbols you can use very easily. Um, we have also 
here you can access all the details we asked at the beginning when we did the wizard. So you can uh, always go back to it and, and read it. This is for the widget description and then we've got the use case, which you can also edit. Uh, the edit, uh, we've got the basics uh, undo, redo, which can be quite useful. Uh, I forgot in the view menu, we've got this uh, included components, which can be quite useful to make sure to check which components you've got in your uh, in your uh, widget, because sometimes uh, maybe a component doesn't display right, so you, you can't click on it, physically click on it, so you can uh, always get them from here, which is quite useful. And finally, the so we've got the preview, which is a regular preview in a web page, and preview for mobile, which displays what it could look like on your on your mobile. We've got the save window, uh, which is the, base, the the final steps of uh, designing your widgets. So at this point, the title is required before saving. Uh, the description is uh, is not mandatory either. You can uh, fill the use case from here, in case you forgot, because we've got this design status here, which, uh, which when you select completed, that would be when you uh, actually share the widget with your students, and uh, then the students can come back to the tool and start from your widget, it will create a copy and uh, adapt their own. So they can actually adapt the, your widget to their own needs. And at this point, you are required to fill in the use case. Now, the, the, the link to the widget tool, once you're editing your widget, you can see our widget uh, URL has changed, and this is the same here and the same over here. This is the, the URL you would keep safe uh, if you want to come back to, read, to finish your design or to redesign it, that's the one you would keep safe. Uh, so you've got, we've got uh, several options to keep it somewhere. You could also download, because there are W3C packages, W3C widgets, sorry, you can download the packages as a WGT file or a zip file, as you choose. Uh, WGT file can be used uh, with Opera, the, the web browser, which, which has a widget engine, so you can download the WGT file and directly open it with Opera. So this is for the save. Once you're done, you can save it. The next step will be the sharing. So export and share. Now you can, uh, this is the, the link to your widget directly. So this is the one you would actually share with your students. Um, so you can, uh, for those familiar with blogs, you can always uh, copy this uh, small amount of uh, text in one of your blog posts to embed your widgets uh, within your blog post, uh, as we would do with a, with a YouTube video. Uh, this is the link for editing your, the widgets, and you can share it on uh, several platforms. Uh, we've got our partners, the Roll Widget Store, Realize, Jerome, from the GISC. Um, so I think that's it for the tool. Um, and back to you, Ellen. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Well, that was um, a bit of a whistle-stop tour through the interface. Um, I noticed that somebody said, "Is it? Um, does it? It looks a little bit like um, an in creating an interface using VB." We we um, we designed the toolkit. Well. Partly, we designed the toolkit with um, with our community of practice. So we we got people together who had been involved in the initial um, learning designs, um, and we asked them if if you were given a, a tool to to create a widget for yourself, what what would you want it to look like, and how would you want it to to work? Um, and this was the the basic design that. Um, that the community came up with in a in a sort of design bash we had at um, at uh, just kept this um, I suppose about nearly two years ago now, um, and it's uh, evolved slightly since then. So the idea was that um, people very much wanted it to be to look 
pretty much familiar to them. So similar to any other kind of toolkit that you might um, uh, that you might um, come across. Um, so um, and Frank just took you through making a very basic widget, and you could see there that the editing um, panel on the right hand side is <clears throat> basically the the interface between you and the and the code so it allows you to select um, a, a whole range of options um, to to add actions to your to your widgets and to your widget components um, without having to know anything about the code that's, that's behind it so what we thought we would like to do now um, are there any questions before we, we go on? Or, Martin, would you like me to just continue? Uh, Elaine, you, you carry on unless there's something that uh, particularly uh, somebody wanted to know, in which case I think they could put it into the chat. So you carry on, okay, Elaine. Okay, fine. Fine, thank you. Um, okay, so we, so we thought that we would um, just take you through um, a few of the um, widgets that um, have been created in the last six months um, by participants in our widget and practice project, um, which was where we actually um, took the toolkit out to um, FE and HE and specialist teachers um, and uh, asked them to play around with it and to develop um, a widget to, um, to to support their own students and to give us feedback. Um, so, if we starting with the first one, which is a, a visual daily schedule. Now, we're, Frank and I are working together on this, so he's controlling the uh, actual interface, and I'm talking. So, let's hope it works. So, this one. Um, uh, visual daily schedule. Um, this was created by um, one of our uh, FE participants, um, and what he wanted to, he worked with students with with general learning difficulties um, who tended to have difficulties in processing their um, time or organizing their day. So he wanted. Um, a timetable that that he could use and that he would adapt for each individual student if necessary or for small groups of them. So he wanted to use it on a on a day to day basis. So so basically here in the um uh, in this daily schedule um it's this is just taking them through what they need to do before they get to college on a morning. Um, this was a residential college, I believe. Um, so uh, it, it's simply um, giving them a, a personalized schedule that reminds them that when they've got to get up, they've got to get out of bed, and that they can give themselves, um, they, they've got five minutes, basically, to do that. So they can have five minutes lying, and they check the box um, to show that they've completed the activity. And then the the next timer begins. So it's basically to allow themselves to um, to remind them that they you know the activities they need to do so that they do need to have a shower, um, get dressed, um, is that have their breakfast or take their medication. Um, and as they check each box, um, it gives them. Uh, it, it moves on to the next activity so that it times them and they don't forget about the time. I could do with that myself. Okay, that's, the, that's that one. Uh, the next one, this was created by Claire. Um, this is the What to Wear widget. Um, now this widget is created using um, what we call the paging component, so it makes it almost like um, like a little book, um, a little electronic book, in that it has several pages in it. So it means that you can you can drop components um, onto a, a number of pages 
um, so that they can go through um, a series of activities. So um, this widget was designed again for um, students with quite severe disabilities and it was to help them to learn um, and practice simple routines um, and appropriate behaviour. So this what to wear one is again it's a, just a very simple little quiz where they select what would they wear on a, a nice sunny day. So um, and um, and it just tells them if they're correct or not. And then the next one um, asks them to select what would they wear on on a, a rainy day. So you can see it's a very, very simple interface, but using the, the Mulberry symbols um, with no text otherwise other than the correct and incorrect as a reinforcement um, because these students were um, were non-readers really. Um, so this one's what to wear on a wintry day and then I think there's one more. Oh, this is a little bit more complicated because they've got more selections to make for going to the beach, which is what we'd all like to be doing today, I think. And a little bit of text to reinforce. They were for um, students in a special college. Uh, now, this one. Uh, is uh, a little bit more advanced and this one was created quite quickly so it, it still looks a little bit messy um, but this was um, developed for a, a multimedia class um, for a, um, an FE college and this um, teacher wanted to give them a little bit of um, make them a little widget that um, would give them just a brief introduction to continuity editing and give them um, a little quiz uh, which they have so the, the idea is it's, all, it's a little learning activity but this would work alongside um, he was going to use this with his lecture just as a break to give the students um, something to do um, uh, you know as an activity within the lecture so this is um, a video from YouTube which I don't know if Frank's going to set it off, but um, just to show that it does work. So with Widget, you can just drop in um, a YouTube video, um, and then it's just got a set of questions um, with two choices. So so they they need to um, to answer the answer the questions, um, and that's it for that one. Uh, I think Neil spent about an hour doing this and if he'd had a bit more time he would have um, would have aligned his uh, questions a bit better and played around with the text a bit. So that was a, for um, an FE class of, of students who some of them had dyslexia, um, others had no, no um, learning difficulties. And that was a whole class activity. Now the final one is um, from HE and this is just um, to demonstrate uh, kind of the flexibility if you like of, of um, widget uh, in terms of its use. Um, this was developed by one of our um, learning technologists and um, she supports uh, lecturers in, in our at Teesside University. And she finds that they often have difficulty um, creating their Blackboard modules um, and carrying out all the tasks because you only tend to make a new module once a year or maybe twice a year and um, they forget what to do and they don't always know where to find things uh, you know, on the Blackboard support site. And um, so she wanted to make a widget that would have a series of little um, tutorials in that they could use um, and have on their, uh, you know, on, open on their browser while they're actually developing their modules so they could just have a quick check and it would be there for them. 
Um, so she's she made this um, again using the paging component and linking to YouTube videos. Um, and there you see that there's, there's various videos and, and demonstrations. Uh, and um, she also um, gave them a, an, a, an option to, um, to set the date um, when their module was, is to become available so that they know um, when they have to actually make it available because often um, tutors forget to, uh, uh, you know, having made their module, they forget to make it available so the students can't see it. Okay. Well, that was just a very quick, thank you, Frank. Um, that was just a, a very quick demo of just to give you an idea of the kinds of um, widgets that have been created. Um, there are lots, obviously, lots more of, than that. So there are features in there that you can use, like um, Google Maps. Face, links to Facebook, um, uh, the YouTube, the, uh, the symbols, um, there's other much more simple components like little timers and um, scheduling tools and simple quizzes. And the way that we've developed um, Widget is that we've, we've used a, a kind of agile approach so that as our participants have been designing their widgets, if they've identified that they need an extra action on a component or they need a whole new component, we develop them for them so that the, um, the toolkit has grown in, in response to the needs of our users so that they, um, they identify what they want to do with it. Um, so um, I hope that um, uh, we, we put the um, the links to those uh, widgets on there, but also from our own website, um, you'll be able to find lots more widgets. And um, and I ho hope that you'll <coughs> come along next week and bring some ideas of your own and um, and have a go. We are at the moment uh, in a sort of um, redevelopment period, so we've been. Um, uh, making some modifications and we're enhancing widgets um, as a result of the feedback we got from the, the WIT project um, so that we'll be relaunching it with some new enhanced features in the autumn. So if you come along to the workshop next week and you find that there are features there that, um, that uh, you would like, um, if it's possible, then if you identify them, <laughs> we'll be able to build it into the next um, uh, the next sort of launch. Okay, um, thank you. I think Martin, you've got a slide that links like, links to the um, to the JISC staff pack that that supports. Yeah, I have indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine, and thank you, Frank. Very interesting. Thank you. <clears throat> And then, are there any questions before I uh, um, proceed to the final few slides? Any any thoughts? Any queries? Yep. Thank you for your comments, folks. Yep. Um, it will be interesting, Julie, to see uh, how it compares with Xerti, because there is a bit of a learning curve with Xerti, and uh, you. you you, certainly, if, you, if you're going to ask teachers to use uh, widget, then they have, have got to, they've got to have a little bit of time to be able to get themselves acquainted, haven't they? So yeah, an interesting comparison with Xerti. Can I just say, Martin, um, yeah. we, we're not we're not trying to compete with Xerti. We absolutely love Xerti. Um, yeah. It's it, but it it's um, it, it has a different purpose. So Xerti is, is um, designed to support the creation of learning materials, so a whole learning activity. Yes. And we see um, widgets as, 
as um, although um, we think that it has a slight a, a, a lower learning curve than Xerti does. Yes, and with, I think you're right. Um, you often, yeah, you often do need um, more um, uh, coding skills um, for for Xerti, Although I know they're working on that. No, 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 um, uh, also, no, no coding skills required if you use XOT. That's Xerti online it, toolkit. Yeah. No, no, no yeah, coding skills at all required. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Good. That's the newer version, isn't it? Um, yeah. Um, but, but um, we would see. So, so, the way I would um, imagine that you would use um, widget is that you'd probably use it alongside Xerti. So you might create learning materials with Xerti and then create um, some little li widgets that support the learning. Yes, um, and embed them, hopefully team. embed them into Xerti. I, I can see that yeah. happening. Yeah. OK. Any other queries, any other thoughts, any other questions? I'm, uh, I'm particularly uh, impressed with the, um, the, the, the daily schedule. That will be useful, I think, for ASD learners and what to wear. Um, but I presume we can tweak any particular widget that we use, Elaine, Frank? Can users tweak? Yes. OK. Thanks, Frank. Um, yes, you can. You can, um, uh, as long as the, the widget is, is available in editing mode, you could take yes. it and adapt it. OK. Um, or you you could easily just use that as a as a pattern and, and recreate it. Um, yeah. But if it's available in editing mode, which most of them are, um, we just went straight into them as widgets. But most of them, um, the URLs are there um, for e in editing mode. Um, so that means you could go back in and make changes to it, um, uh, and just put different change the symbols or um, you know change the add add activities to it or whatever. OK, thanks, Elaine. I'll just put the Mulberry, Mulberry Symbols uh, URL into the text pane again, because that is a useful uh, tool. Uh, for those people looking for free open source symbols, the Mulberry, Mulberry tool set is available at Straight Street. Um, that's open source. Now, uh, on the slide there, you'll see the just checked as training resources. Uh, and those are Xerti uh, resources, uh, introducing, creating, building, and using, are all Xerti objects. Um, so have a look at those. And um, that's the main Detectus URL at the top there. So thank you to Elaine, thank you to Frank, um, and hopefully uh, we'll s see some of you at uh, their session next week, which I'm coming to in a second, actually. Sorry, Elaine, did you have something to say? No, just thank you very much and look forward to seeing people next week. Thank you. Now, we've got uh, another two webinars today. Insight into ePortfolios is coming up at 12 o'clock, and then at 2 o'clock, using iPads.